Avocado is a major export crop to the European Union. However, for several years now, high prevalence of pests and diseases have negatively impacted avocado production and trade due to high levels of pre- and post-harvest losses. We have a fruit here which is uh, not doing well. To improve the situation, Cole SCP has developed a training program on Integrated Pest Management or IPM for avocado, specifically targeting agronomies from avocado producing and exporting companies in Kenya with an aim of filling this skill gap. Heat is different from light. This video aims at presenting the viewer with the general key messages to retain from this training. So you turn the leaf and look. Sometimes you see things walking. Dr. Virginia Kimani, one of the lead crop protection trainers in Kenya, tells us more about the training and the field observations. Our goal is basically to um, explore what are the options that are available for integrated pest management of avocado, uh, and especially in this, in this area uh, in Kenya in general. The most common avocado pests in Kenya that are of economic importance and prohibited in some markets such as the European Union includes the fruit fly, scientifically known as Bactrocera invadens or Ceratitis sp, the false codling moth or FCM, also known as Tomatotibia leucotreta, mosquito bags, and thrips, among others. And in terms of diseases, anthracnos, phytophthora, rosalinia, cerospora, pepper spot, sun blotch, and sunburn are some of the most common diseases affecting avocado production in Kenya. This video covers three key components of avocado IPM training, namely scouting and monitoring for pests and diseases identification of pests and diseases, and IPM control measures for avocado pests and diseases. There's a lot that goes on within the plants. For a successful scouting activity to take place, a block of 10 data trees was selected in the farm during the field training. And on each tree, the following activities were carried out. An inspection for white sugary exudates, which would give an indication of pest damage the health status of each tree was checked to identify anthracnose, phytophthora, rosalinia, cerospora, pepper spot, sun blotch, and sunburn diseases. An inspection for the presence of thrips, fruit flies, and the false codling moth. And finally, an inspection for the presence of coconut bags and mosquito bags. Dr. Virginia Kimani explains the importance of scouting. We do scouting so that we can know what is happening in the, in the orchard. It's, it's, it's a finding out exercise. And when you get there, basically you are doing as much as possible in terms of looking, examining, critiquing, checking out. So we normally would expect this uh, false codling moth would expect there might be fruit flies. Uh, we would expect maybe there are some insects called thrips. We also have a certain disease which is quite important in avocado called uh, arthracnose. It may start in the field, but later it is seen more closely when you are ready to pack. In case sugary exudates are observed during scouting, it is recommended to have a closer look at the selected fruits using a magnifying lens and also by cutting open a few fruits using a pocket knife to determine the pests that may be present. All the information observed during scouting must be recorded and communicated for further interventions. On identification, field visits offer the best opportunity for trainees to practically learn the various symptoms of different avocado pests and diseases. For instance, it was observed that fruit flies lay eggs under the skin of the fruits. This can happen at any stage of the fruit development. When the fruit grows, lesions appear as slight puncture marks surrounded by white substances. As the fruit develops, the lesions become dry 
and turn into a distinct star-shaped crack on the skin surface and the fruits may fall prematurely. Fruit flies can be controlled by proper orchard sanitation, monitoring and using lures and baits for trapping. The false codling moth or FCM was also top of the list during the training. It is an important economic pest with zero tolerance by the European Union. Even though it does not complete its life cycle in avocados under normal circumstances, it has an extensive host range of about 80 different plants. It has four stages in its life cycle, namely the egg, the larva, the pupa, and the adult moth. Their caterpillars damage the fruit and its key symptoms is irregular lesions with granular frost on the fruits. Some insect is trying to make a home around here. While examining avocado leaves using a magnifying lens, signs of thrips were also observed under the leaves during the exercise. They included distortion of young leaves and fruits, eggs on the underside of the leaves, spotting on flowers, yellow speckled areas on leaves, black spots of thrips excrement on leaves, and epidermal roughening of the fruit originating in the calyx. And finally, the presence of sucking bugs, such as coconut bugs and mosquito bugs, were also observed. They were characterized by lesions on one fruit or in a sector of trees and also on the upper part of the trees predominantly. But how do you ensure that these avocado pests and diseases are eliminated or kept under control? Agronomists and orchard managers should be able to make an informed decision on pest and disease management options based on their observations and the available control methods for pests. I can see the fruit has been uh, seriously, you know, eaten up. According to Dr. Kimani, prevention or exclusion of target pests is often the first line of defense, after which biological or chemical control methods can be used if pest levels still reach economic thresholds. A good grower would start even from the seedling stage so that they get clean seedlings um, and then even as they plant the seed then they are planting it in a clean soil making sure that uh, the plant is uh, clear of weeds because some weeds out and it hosts to certain pests and diseases and overall the IPM using biological, mechanical, uh, cultural and, uh, and, 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 and chemical methods where they, they, are, they are quite available you know that would be an integrated approach. The use of traps and lures is one example of a management tool for monitoring and controlling of pests such as the fruit fly and the false codling moth. The lure only attracts the fly and then the chemical is the one that kills the fly when it is already captured. They are both classified as quarantine pests and therefore a simple sighting of any of these pests in the traps means action must be taken. The use of traps and lures also help in reducing their population in avocado orchards. For the traps to work effectively, the following rules must be adhered to. All dispensers be stored in the refrigerator until use. All old dispensers be disposed of outside the orchards. Traps should be placed on the upwind area of the orchard as well as in the fourth or fifth row from the perimeter of the orchard. Use plus or minus one trap for every four hectares. Traps should be placed on the southern side of the tree and in dense orchards. The southwestern or western areas should be considered. Each trap should be placed as high up in the tree as possible and rather position the trap in the outside area of the canopy than deeper in the canopy close to the main stem. And ensure that the trap can move freely and that the moths have unhindered access to the trap. The use of cover crops such as sweet potato vines, beans, sunham and cowpeas is also recommended 
as they provide nourishment or nectar for beneficial insects such as bees that help in pollination. However, there is a risk of interference and therefore they must be selected carefully to avoid those that may play as alternate hosts of pests that affect avocado. If you are not able to choose the other crop that you are going to intercrop with the avocado, you could end up maybe choosing a crop that is going to undermine your target crop, which is the avocado. The roots of the avocado stretch a bit far from the main trunk. So even if you are intercropping, it's important to give, to, to not interfere so much with the roots where they are trying to feed the plant. Cultural methods such as use of certified seeds, soil drenching, pruning for aeration and mulching one meter away from avocado trees are also some of the recommended IPM control measures that can be used to lower pest and disease prevalence. Proper drainage should be ensured in the orchard to avoid root rot diseases. Sanitation in the orchards should also be maintained, for instance, through collection and proper disposal of fallen avocado fruits. Faith Mwandiko, one of the trainees who attended the field training, explains. What I've learned is uh, the uh, other means that uh, should intervene the spray programs for avocado in managing pests and diseases. One of the IPM measures, we have uh, the cultural methods, that is the uh, uh, sanitation of the fields. The fields or the orchards should remain clean because if we have baby like weeds or uh, branches which has, have, have been uh, uh, cut and dropped in how, they, 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 they tend to be the host for the diseases and the pests. It is worth noting that after the implementation of the IPM program, its effectiveness should be monitored in order to establish if the pest occurrence has decreased or stabilized. Agronomists or orchard managers must continue monitoring pest population levels to inform on any additional management strategies and evaluate their overall effectiveness. In conclusion, Although some large growers are well established and use various methods to control pests and diseases effectively, some avocado growers are small-scale farmers and may not have access to the appropriate spraying equipment. The EU is also placing an increasingly bigger emphasis on sustainably produced fruits. Composting and generally enriching the soil with products such as trichoderma and the use of biological pest control products such as bovaria and metherisium will not only enhance plant vigor, but it also controls important pests and diseases with soil-dwelling life stages, such as thrips or false codling moth. <music>